Welcome to my presentation on classifying edits to variability in source code, which is joint work with Christoph Tinnis, Alexander Schultheis, Sören Wiegner, Timo Kehrer and Thomas Thüm. Match software comprises massive and evolving variability. As an example, the Linux kernel has over 12,000 configuration options that give rise to more than 10 to the power of 5,000 different variants in the year of 2016. And as a comparison, um, there's only about 10 to the power of 80 atoms in the observable universe. And each week we get 21,000 new lines of code and 50 new configuration options. So uh, someone has to keep track of all this variability and to ensure that the software is still correct. So how is it implemented? This is an example from Vim, which, which is similar to Linux implemented in C and uses the C preprocessor to implement variability. Um, parts of the source code are annotated with preprocessor statement to activate or deactivate them depending on certain configuration. For example, if we select the feature GUI, we get these two lines of code on our final variant and get another um, program that we can, can then compile. If we instead deselect feature GUI and, and, and set, uh, but on Windows, we get this line included in our variant and if we deselect both options, we get an empty function in this case. So for the rest of this talk, we will look at a simplified version of this example where we just replace the name of some placeholders. And of course, the source code was edited. In this commit, uh, some changes were made and the typical view developers have in version control system when looking at changes to source code is a text-based diff. And you see that both source code was changed and preprocessor annotations were changed, but it's hard to differentiate um, both kinds of changes and how each uh, how the changes affect variability of each part of a code base. So that's our goal and of course there's related work on edit classification but it has um, uh, three key drawbacks. First, uh, some work is incomplete which means um, there's edits that cannot be explained or classified or it's ambiguous which means, which means there's edits um, for which is more than there exists more than one explanation or it's not automatable um, for example because classifications are given a natural language so um, we cannot automatically determine um, the impact of a certain edit operation so our research goal is given a change to the code base uh, to make it to get a complete unambiguous and automatable model and classification for edits to variability and as a first step we introduce variation trees as a model for variability in source code. Let's take a closer look. Uh, variation trees represent the abstract syntax of variability. So each variability annotation in blue has a node in the corresponding tree also highlighted in blue and the source code lines um, are represented by black bordered nodes. There's a synthetic root node which is mostly there to make the math easier. Um, so given variation trees as our model for variability, we find that edits to variability then become edits to variation trees, which we then express as variation diffs. So again, let's take a closer look. We can create variation diffs either from the trees directly or from the text-based diff. So when we compare the text-based diff with, with a tree-based representation, we see that each um, element in the text-based diff has a corresponding element in the graph. Uh, removed uh, parts are highlighted in orange, added parts in green. And for example, we see that this node foo, here it was unchanged, highlighted in gray, but um, this annotation, for example, is inserted, highlighted in green, um, down here. So, um, our goal of classifying edits then becomes, um, reduces to classifying structures and variation diffs, because these are now our model for variability in source code. So in looking at this tree, we find that the node foo was actually unchanged. Um, <clears throat> so this source code didn't experience any changes, neither itself nor the nodes above in the hierarchy. The source code line bar was inserted to an already existing configuration option of feature A. And the source code line bus wasn't um, changed itself, but it was moved from uh, from some configuration options to others. So previously it was mapped to B and not A, which is given by the annotation B and being nested in an else branch of A. And afterwards is assigned to this more complicated formula. 
So formally, we define a classification as a set of classes, as usually, um, where a class assigns one code artifact, one code node to true or false. So it's a predicate that tells us whether this uh, class, uh, whether this code node belongs to this class. As an example, we introduce the add to PC class, add to presence condition, for short, which tells us um, for a sort uh, for a source code fragment if it was inserted and it but and its parent wasn't inserted, which means that it was added to an already existing variability annotation. So this, here on the bottom you see an example where code was inserted below an already existing annotation. In total, we define nine different classes, also uh, capturing removals and, uh, and moves, but also other classifications are possible. These are nine predicates we found useful when looking at certain use cases from our experience and related work. So we're, go we're going back to our example. We see that this uh, insertion of a source code line bar is indeed an instance of the add to PC class we just uh, saw. Um, we refer to unchanged artifacts like the foo node as untouched, as they didn't get any changes. And we explain the change below for the source code line bus as a generalization, because um, the set of products it's in, it is contained in is now grow, uh, has grown now. So previously it was assigned to B and not A, and afterwards it's assigned to a formula which is weaker, so it's contained in more valid variants. So now we have our classification, and but our goal was not just have a classification, but also show that it's complete and unambiguous. So that's why we perform an analytical evaluation, and first we show, uh, we prove that variation diffs are a complete and sound model for edits to variability in source code. Uh, in particular, they're complete and sound with respect to edits to variation trees. And second, we prove that our classification is complete and unambiguous. So in combination, we see that our classification is complete. Then we also perform an empirical evaluation based on 44 open source um, software systems, including the Linux kernel. So in total, we analyze 1.7 million commits, um, which can include about 45 million edited source code lines. We pass all patches in, within the history to a variation diff each. If this fails, we inspect the failure because this might give uh, us a clue about, about uh, if our variation trees are complete or not. If patching uh, parsing was successful, we classify the edits and then we count the class occurrences. And uh, last but not least, we also measure the runtime of the whole process to um, see if this process can be automated and scales. So for our research goals, first we wanted to validate the completeness of variation diffs. Of course, we have already proven their completeness, but only based on the assumption that um, variation trees are complete. We find that we can pass all syntactically correct um, pa patches with syntactically correct, correct variability annotation, which is the majority, and uh, all of the remaining patches that could not be passed uh, had indeed syntactically ill-formed variability annotation, for example, an else branch without an if or an if without an end if. So we conclude that variation diffs are complete. Um, second, we wanted to validate that uh, our classification is indeed complete and unambiguous, and we find that uh, indeed all edits were ex assigned exactly one class, so it's complete and unambiguous. Third, um, we check on relevancy, so we wanted to see if uh, classes we defined are indeed relevant, which we measure by looking for them occurring in practice. And as a result, we find that all classes uh, indeed occur in practice, starting with 91,000 occurrences um, for the rarest pattern and up to 22 million occurrences for the largest, uh, for the um, most often pattern. And uh, last, uh, we also check on scalability because we wanted to make sure that this classification can indeed be automated and that it scales. And we find that the majority of commits can be processed in less than a second with 19 million seconds per commit being the median. So we conclude that the classification can indeed be automated. So in conclusion, given an added to variability in source code, we first introduced variation trees to model variability in a more general way, then introduced variation diffs as a complete and sound model for edits to variability in source code, 
And finally, um, presented a classification which is proven and shown to be complete, unambiguous and automated.